Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Agile PMP. This is CJ Mills here with your Sunday status report. I got reversed on the background right now. <laughs> uncertainty. That's what our episode is about tonight. It's all about uncertainty. Things that you don't know. I had no idea that he'd be here standing behind me, but you guys get to see his beautiful face and hear my voice. So we're going to talk about estimates and uncertainty. This is sort of like um, when your parents tell you, hey, be home when the street lights come on. At least in my day, that's what they used to tell us. Be home when the street lights come on. And there was uncertainty. When do the street lights come on? We don't know. When does it get dark? We have no idea. So I always got to relate this back to project management and sort of how does it work for you guys? How is this going to how is this going to help you in your lives and your business and anything else? So it's all about estimates. A lot of times we'll get estimates from people, whether it's from from our vendors, our contractors. Now that's in business, but it, this could be estimates from your family members or from your friends. And, and it's all about the duration. How long is something going to take? How much is something going to cost? And you rely on these estimates, but in the end, it's still uncertain. It's uncertain because all of these estimates are based off of assumptions. Assumptions that are used to create these estimates, which then become tied to a plan. And a lot of times we hold these plans to be the truth. And it's sort of like, well, why, why are we not moving towards the plan? Why are we not following the plan? Why are we not approaching you know, our goals as per the plan? Well, maybe because they're based off assumptions and those assumptions are not held to be true. They're full of uncertainties, uncertainties. Hey, Kevin, I see that you joined. I know that you're with uh, UP, with the railroad. There's gotta be a ton of uncertainties, man. I mean, a ton, of, a ton of uncertainties in terms of, are you guys gonna really make it there at 7, 18 p.m.? When I look at that little number on, 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 the, on the booklet, and when you guys are gonna arrive, is that really gonna happen at that time? So that's what we're talking about today. Now, if you were with me for the last episode, we did it here, right here in Costa Rica. We did it a couple of days ago, and we talked about hearing versus listening. And we talked about um, watching that movie, White Man Can't Jump. So a lot of, I hope a lot of you guys have watched that movie, saw Eddie, saw not Eddie Murphy, see, uncertainty, saw Wesley Snipes talk about hearing Jimi Hendrix versus listening to Jimi Hendrix. So now I'm going to tell you guys the opposite. A lot of times people want to be heard, but do you listen? Do you listen for cues on uncertainty? Listen and people, you know, it's not about all the verbal things that people talk about, but it's the, it's the nonverbal cues that you've got to watch out for when we're talking about uncertainty. So body language, tone of voice, eye contact, those things will give you cues to uncertainty. So this is sort of like if you have kids, and you ask them, hey, did you wash your hands before they come to eat? Or did you brush your teeth before you go to bed? Or did you take a shower? You got to look into their eyes and really see, are they telling you the truth? You got to look into their body language. Do they slump down their tone of voice? Do they answer you very confidently? Or are they kind of like, yeah, I did. That's going to let you know if they're pretty uncertain in their answer or not. And that's going to let you know if you should take their answer to be truth or not the truth. So that's the idea of uncertainty. But then there's also some folks who have the ability to sort of talk to you and be very like give you that very certain feeling in their body con in their body language and their eye contact and their tone of voice how do you deal with that so that's the idea of overconfidence and excitement and unsureness can you look at that you know some of you guys might want to go in and, and do some uh, some recon work and look at look at those movies when they're looking at people who are looking up to the left or up to the right and does that really mean you know are they lying or not are they telling the truth are they really confident i mean look at roberto's eyes right now you know where, where is he looking where is he looking before here and now and then do we know is he certain what he's talking about? Well, he's not talking, I'm talking, but I mean, you get the point. So it's all about uncertainty. And that's what we do as project managers every day. We deal with folks who are either gonna give us real answers or non-real answers. And the point is, can you figure that out in the moment? Even if you haven't had a lot of experience with this person and you haven't had a lot of time dealing with this person, can you really watch them, look into their eyes, listen to their tone of voice? watch their body language. So now it's not about hearing what they're saying, but it's about listening to everything else, all the nonverbal cues. And so again, I mean, it goes back to everything in life. It's not just business, but it, it's, it's, it's us dealing with family members. It's us dealing with friends. So what about, what about when you get back to business? And what about when you get with folks who have an agreement with you? And there's always agreements versus understanding. Sometimes people will sign contracts and they might agree to what you've told them, but do they truly understand what it is that they're talk that you're talking about? Do they truly understand? Even though they sign their, their name on a dotted line, a lot of times people don't know what they're signing or they don't understand what it is that they're signing or they might have another representative that 
has come in and has signed on that person's behalf. This happens every day in business. You have a lot of times where the company has representatives, whether they're CEOs, CFOs, whether they're senior VPs or directors, and folks will buy, blindly sign their name on a dotted line but have no idea because they've been given some information by someone else. So I challenge all of you folks who are in those roles as well, are you dealing with uncertainty? Did you look into that person's eyes? Did you look at their eyes? Did you hear, did you hear their tone of voice? Or better yet, did you listen to the body language? Do you know? Active listening, exactly, Christy. Thank you for chiming in. I mean, that's the whole idea. And it's not just about, you know, listening to somebody and saying, well, well, if I understand you or if I hear what you're saying, but it's really about watching for all of those cues. So I know I told you guys last time, well, do you hear? But this time I'm talking about, do you listen? Do you listen to all these things? Because a stat for you guys, only 8% of what we say is actually taken into, into account for people. 92% of it is nonverbal. So the words are just between the people. I mean, you have one universal word in the world, and that's no. It doesn't matter what language you speak. If I say no, you know what I'm saying. If I shake my head, you know that that means no. But for the most part, everything else, that's 92% based on your interpretation. And a lot of that interpretation is based off assumptions. And those assumptions cause uncertainty. And so how do you sort of combat that? Again, it's all about reading the nonverbal cues. And the, the easiest three things for you guys is going to be eye contact, body language, and tone of voice, right? So without getting into depths on how you sort of read somebody's eye contact with how you sort of read their body language or how you listen to their tone of voice, you guys can do that on your own. You just know that those are the three things that are going to make you successful and really determining does somebody understand versus do they just agree with me? So this is, again, I'll tie it back to family, all right? Some of you guys have kids. Some of you guys don't have kids, but you have brothers and sisters. Some of you guys remember what it was to be like a kid, and your parents would ask you a question, and you might tell them yes, but you really meant no. And your parents didn't know, right? They might have agreed with you, okay, this, this, my child is saying yes. They're going to be home at the end of the day when, when the streetlights come on. For those of you guys that still have streetlights, you know, some of you guys may not, but hopefully you all do. And in those situations, you got to know. So... For the most part, make sure that folks can repeat back whatever it is that you've told them. Make sure that they can that they can understand by giving you some some sort of uh, some sort of information, whether it's repeating back like I just mentioned, or whether it's asking you questions. But make sure that they truly understand what it is that you have explained to them. That way, there's no more uncertainty, or at least you've minimized it as much as you can. So, that's it for today. You know, one other tidbit for you guys, if you can. Try to have them relate back to you in some sort of metaphor or some sort of analogy so that way you know for sure that there's no more uncertainty. They truly understand. So as usual, please share this video. I hope it's been incredibly useful for all of you guys dealing with uncertainty. I know Roberto's no longer dealing with uncertainty because I can see his eyes in the screen and I can tell that he's looking right there. So now that I can, I can see his eye contact, I read his body language, he's pretty good. I can't hear his tone of voice because he's not talking, but either way, I've got at least Two out of the three for my 92%. The other part's in his words. He hasn't spoken a word, so I'm not going to worry about that. So once again, share this video. And as always, create solutions, adapt processes, think strategically. You guys have a good night.